Welcome. Uh, I'm Martin and this is Per. And uh, it's definitely right that we're going to talk about how to integrate web content into Java application using JavaFX. And uh, we'll be doing this using a component called the web view in JavaFX. And this component was introduced with the big rewrite of JavaFX called JavaFX2. So it's been out for about a year and it's quite mature and we'll show you how to use it. And we'll, do, we'll be doing this by showing you a lot of examples and demos. Some of them show you how the web view works and some of them are a bit more, a bit more crazy perhaps and more of an inspiration show you what it could be used for. Um, so I don't know, um, how about a really simple introductionary example of how to use the web view? Sure. But I just want to clarify that, yes, we, we will do a lot of demos and examples, but my demos are the cool ones. His demos what? suck. Yeah, sure. I will show you. Wha so oh. let's start with, with a web component. And the main reason for using a web component is to just display HTML content. So that seems like a, a great start. So I'm going to show you how to load a single web page. And this is an example. This is a Java FX application that shows a single component. And this is a screenshot of what it looks like. OK. So this is your cool demo. Yeah. My Little Pony. All so right. I've, well. I'm trying to be a nice guy. I mean, I've been at your apartment. And I've seen all the posters on your walls, and they all contain <coughs> my little pony. All right, so this is for let's you. Let's move on. Let's move on. That's okay, so yeah. this is a simple web page, and I'm going to show you how to do it us using code. But before we do that, I think we should start by just looking at the architecture. So this is what it looks like. The web component contains two classes. Well, the web com component contains more than two classes, but these are the two important ones. So we have a web view, and we have a web. Uh, engine. And the web view is just a, just a simple JavaFX node that you can insert wherever you like into, into your JavaFX application. And the web view's responsibility is to just present content that is generated by the web engine. And the web engine is responsible for loading the content from the web, parsing it, creating the DOM, and applying CSS and then generating the content to the web view. So the web engine does the work and the web yeah. view presents stuff. It's a bit like yeah. you and me, you know, I do the work and you present it. <laughs> Very funny. <laughs> yeah. So when you work with a web component, it's important that you know that it's single threaded. So whenever you do an invocation to the web engine, you have to be on the FX application thread. It's pretty much like swing. So let's take a look at the code. We create a simple JavaFX application, and we create the web view. And then we load the page by invoking web view, get the engine, and load. And then, you know, well, my little pony in our stupid case. In your case. Yeah. In my case. And that's how you load an external resource. But sometimes you want to load an, a resource that you've bundled with your, with, with your package or a jar file. And in that case, you can just point the, the parameter to the local web page like this. So this is my path to my HTML file in my bundle. So it could be inside your jar file. Could be inside my yeah. jar file just as well. So you don't have to load external resources. And sometimes you just want to show a little piece of HTML, you know, just a tiny bit of HTML. And you might want to do that using just a string. So we have this page content that is a string in our application, and we have proper HTML code. And this could, I mean, it doesn't have to be a, a small, small bit of HTML. It's more of a way to load HTML from any source. Yeah. You can just pass in a string. Yeah. So. And we just replace the load invocation to load content, and we pass a string. And depending on what kind of content you have in your page content string, it might look something like this <laughs> in our case. Funny. I know. So. The web component is based on WebKit. And WebKit is used by many of the major browser vendors out there. So it's really competent. And backed by WebKit, 
the web component supports CSS, SVG, media, JavaScript, and Canvas, and everything you come to expect from a modern browser. So it's really competent, as we will show you later on. So My Little Pony. Yeah, that's your cool demo. Yeah, all right. One of them. Well, showing a web page and showing web content is well, it's a pretty obvious place to start this road that we're on. But I'm going to make things a bit more interesting by showing how you can integrate the web component into your applications and kind of make it fit in there like a well, like a well integrated component. You just you don't you, you almost never want a full screen web component and nothing else. You probably want um, something around it as well. So there are many ways of doing this, but I'm going to focus on three of them. Uh, visualizing page load progress, you know, show the user what's going on. Uh, handling alert calls and opening new windows from JavaScript. And uh, unlike your screenshot, I have actually written a real demo to show this. All right. Ooh. Um, okay, so the white area here is a web view, uh, but it doesn't have any content yet, so it's just empty. And up here I've also added a progress bar, and the progress bar is also part of J um, JavaFX, it's a standard component. And when I load a web page here, like this, you'll see that the progress bar fills up just like you would expect it to do. And I have a couple of other demos right away here. Um, we have the alert, for example. Uh, and alerts, for those of you who don't know, are those annoying dialog boxes that JavaScript can pop up, like, ooh, blah, 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 and you have an OK button. Um, if I loaded this web page in, uh, in the web view r straight out of the box, nothing would actually happen when I try to show an alert dialog. There are no built-in handling of alert calls uh, in the web view. But it's very easy to create your own. There is a callback for the alert method. And if I click this, I've created a simple pane that slides down from the top, so you can visualize this any way you want. And this would work with any web page uh, calling the alert function in JavaScript. Why, why would you use this? Um, if you're loading a web page that has an alert call for some reason, you can choose yourself how to visualize it. Yeah, if you have in your JavaScript an alert call, um, the, this is just a way to capture that, basically. So we'll show a use for it later on, but uh, uh, this is just to show you can visualize them any way you want. And in JavaScript, you also have the possibility to open new windows, and you can sort of uh, have, a, you can make um, requests for different features for these windows. You can, uh, for example, uh, request that it has a menu bar or that it's resizable or not. And this is also a case where you can sort of override a, 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 fu a function or register a callback to do whatever you want. Um, the standard behavior is a bit strange. Instead of opening, an, opening a new window in the web view, it actually loads the URL of the new window in the current view. So unless you want that behavior, you, ha you have to override this or set this callback and handle it any other way you want. So here I've created a simple pop-up that actually opens on my screen. Uh, right here. So it's a very traditional pop-up window with a very impressive page. And that's one way of doing it, I guess. So let's go back to the slides and have a look at some code. Right. So first I showed the progress demo, uh, which is a very simple thing. Um, we create a web view and we create a progress bar. Those are the components we need. Then we get the something called the load worker from, from the web engine that you were talking about. Um, and the load worker, just like the name suggests, is uh, a class responsible for loading resources into the web view. So we get the load worker, and then we use a very handy JavaFX feature called bindings to bind the progress of the load worker to the value of the progress bar. And that looks something like this. Um, so you have properties in JavaFX. So we get the progress property of the progress bar, and then we use the bind keyword to, uh, or bind uh, method to bind this value to, to the progress uh, bar, uh, or to the load worker. 
And this is a very powerful feature, and, you, and it, it makes working with user interfaces very nice. You don't have to write an awful lot of code. You don't have to update it, uh, the values at different points and so on. You can just bind it and it will work. So I like it a lot. Um, all right, so with these four lines of code, we have a progress bar that will always update as the page is loading, which I think is very nice. Uh, we, also have, uh, we also had an alert demo. And this is also very simple. You set an uh, event handler on the set on alert callback, and you just get um, an invocation of the handle method with a string, a string event containing the message for the alert dialog. So you can do whatever you want with this. And new windows. Well, this takes a bit more work. Like I said, you can make requests for different features for this new window from JavaScript. And we get those requests in um, an object called a pop-up features object. And this is just a class with different features that we can request. And our job here is to return a web engine, which might seem a bit strange. But what we want to do is point, um, point the JavaFX framework to where we want the new window or the content of the new window to be loaded. So we return the web engine of the web view that should load the new uh, the content of the new window. So th this might be in a pop-up like what I did, or it might be in a different tab, or it, if you return null, it won't be opened at all. So you can choose sort of where this new window content should go. In this case, I create a new stage, create a new web view, and just show this stage, which is, the stage is a window, basically. So we open a new window with a new web view and just load the content. It's, it's all, very, all, very, all very easy. All right, so this way you can sort of integrate the WebView component a bit more into your applications and make it a more well-behaved part of your program, I guess. And I think that's a slightly cooler demo than what you showed. Whatever. So, registering callbacks to handle progress and alerts. Well, it's necessary, but it's not enough if you want to create a seamless user experience. What's missing is communication. We need a way to communicate from JavaFX and into the web view to be able to control the web view. Otherwise, it will just be a dumb, non-interactive part of the user interface. So in this part of the presentation, I will show you how to communicate using JavaScript from JavaFX and into the JavaScript part of the web engine. So I create a web view, like we've done before, and I get the engine, and I load a page. And before I start sending JavaScript commands, I have to wait for the page to finish loading. And I do that by registering a change listener to the state property of the load worker. And well, <coughs> when the changed method gets invoked and the state is equal to succeeded, I know that the page has finished loading. That's how you do it. And if the page hasn't finished loading, you will send command commands to a page that's, well, you don't know what will happen with it. So as soon as we pass the state condition, we can just start in, uh, sending JavaScript commands into the web engine, like this. So we invoke engine and execute script. And to the execute script method, you can pass any valid JavaScript. So it can be a really big JavaScript to manipulate the, the DOM or whatever you like. And in this case, we just change the background of the body to red. And based on our previous example, it will look like this. So any valid JavaScript is possible to send from JavaFX and into the web engine, which is really powerful. And some other things you can do is you can ask for the HTML of the page by doing this. And there is no method in the web engine or in the web view to get the source code. This is the only way to do it if you want to get the HTML source code. Or you can just scroll to a specific point if you want to scroll the page. And once again, there is no support in there. There's no method supporting this in a web engine. So you have to do it using uh, JavaScript. Or you, can, you can invoke any existing JavaScript function that's already, already in the code. Okay, so you're saying there are actually good use cases for this. You don't have to do anything with the JavaScript, really, but you can use it to get the web view to do things yeah. that you want it to do, yeah. basically. 
Okay. So uh, communication is really powerful and something we, we will use later on in our examples. So once again, I demo the screenshot. Yeah, good job. Your turn. Um, yeah, communicating this way, well, it's nice to be able to sort of tell the web view what to do by sending JavaScript, uh, JavaScript code into it, but it's not, it's not a very elegant solution. And I'm going to talk a bit about communicating the other way, having JavaScript tell the Java application to do stuff. And there's no way we'll, we'll be able to write you know, a string with Java code and have that executed. That wouldn't be very secure. So let's have a look at what the problem is here, really. We're using or working with two separate contexts here. We have the Java code, of course, running in our Java uh, application. And then we have JavaScript running within the web view. So Per showed us how to communicate this way by simply sending JavaScript code into the web view and say, hey, run this code. Um, but like I said, that's not going to work the other way. So what we can do is to create an object in the Java context and sort of send a mirror image of that into Java, uh, JavaScript. So this JavaScript object will be a copy of the Java object with the same methods, uh, exact same signatures as far as it's possible with the data types in JavaScript. And by calling the methods in this JavaScript object, we can have our Java program do stuff. And this is a very powerful solution, and I really like it a lot. It's very nice because you can invoke these methods from JavaScript and pass variables from JavaScript into Java. And you can also return data back to JavaScript. So it's a very nice integration that you can pretty much do anything you want with it. And uh, I have a demo for this as well. It's a bit underwhelming, perhaps. It's a very simple demo. But um, at least it shows you what could be done with, with this integration. So we'll start it up here. Um, you can, so the question is, is, is the JavaScript aware of yeah, what goes on in Java? What you want to pass across, because you're talking about bidirectional communication. Yeah, you're basically exporting uh, parts of the Java program into JavaScript. You can choose what, what it... So you have to define that in Yeah, I'll show you in a minute. Um, yeah, this will be quick. <laughs> um, so this is a web view with a very nice web page that I wrote myself. And using these links up here, I can actually change the color of the JavaFX program because JavaFX supports CSS as well. So I can just pass in a style sheet to the um, JavaFX program. And another thing that's sort of really a, a proof that this works is I have a link here in my web page that will turn off this application or terminate it. So I can just click here and the program will exit. And there's no way you would be able to do that without this integration. So let's have a look at how to do this or how it works. Um, what you want to do is create a new class uh, that's specifically used to um, communicate with JavaScript. So we create a new class. It doesn't have to inherit anything. It's just a plain class. In this case, it will, uh, in this case we, we call it integration, and it has a single method called exit that just shuts down the application. So that's the last link I showed you. Uh, then we have a web view, and we get its web engine. Uh, and then we actually use the execute script function or method that you used to, well, this is probably the shortest JavaScript you'll ever run, and it's just window, one word. And what this does is return a handle to the window object from the JavaScript context into our JavaFX program. And this will be returned to us as a JS object. And the JS object is a class, it's a generic class that represents any JavaScript object. So it has methods to to set variables, to read variables, and so on. And in this case, we just want to set a new variable of the window object. And we do that using the setMember method. So we use window setMember, give it a nice name, in this case, Java integration, which might not be very nice, but um, that's what we chose. And we just inject a new uh, instance of this uh, class. So this means that in JavaScript, the window object, which is that's sort of the global object where all, all the global variables live. It's, it's the top of the JavaScript context. We'll have a new member called Java integration. And since, since, uh, 
since variables in the window object can be ac accessed anywhere in the page, we can have a link or in a function we can just call Java integration dot exit and we will exit the application. Or we could pass in some value or get some value back and so on. It, it could be a, a, a much more advanced method if we wanted to. But this way we can choose what parts of our Java program to expose to JavaScript. And we should be a bit picky about this. You don't want to expose the file system, for example, because there's really no way of knowing what we're running in the web view. There could be an, some kind of man in the middle attack injecting uh, bad code into our web view and so on. So you should treat it with, uh, as something insecure, I think. Uh, so this way we can show what to expose to it and it really gives a lot of power to, to the JavaScript. You can do stuff that you couldn't be able to do any, um, otherwise. Uh, I guess it's public methods, yeah, I haven't tried private ones. The question was, what is available to JavaScript? Um, I haven't tried anything about public methods, actually. <laughs> uh, but at least public methods work. But I think you should, you should write a custom object that just, that's just used for this, so you don't want to inject existing objects, perhaps. Yes? Can you, pass you can pass parameters, yes. And you, get, you can get data in return as well. And that works. I mean, JavaScript doesn't have an awful lot of, uh, of data types, but it works with strings and numbers and objects and arrays and so on. So it's, well, it's fairly powerful. All right. Sorry? Overloading. Oh, no idea. Um, I guess it would be kind of the same as calling, calling the, the method from your Java code, basically. But... Um, there are areas that we haven't explored yet. <laughs> All right, so that's kind of the most powerful part of, of this integration. So I don't know how you're going to beat that, but give it a try. So I've promised to show you some really cool examples, but this is not the time. I have another screenshot. I have this. Even people in the other room are laughing. <laughs> I know. So, but OK, so you have an ugly bridge. I have an ugly bridge, yeah. So um, I've shown you how to communicate from JavaFX and into JavaScript. And that is a super generic way of doing it. I mean, you can do just about anything with a web page. But if you only want to mani manipulate the DOM in the HTML page, there's another way that is, well, I think it's more beautiful that you can use to change the way the page looks. So I'm going to make this page, well, a little bit more beautiful. And let's take a look at the code for the HTML page. Well, it's, it's, we have the body, and, and we have a div containing text, and we have an image. And we have two IDs, header and image. I mean, it's plain HTML. And the DOM looks something like this. Now, the point is that for every HTML tag, there's a JavaFX counterpart object. So in this case, we have HTML image element in JavaFX, and we have HTML div element and HTML body element. And th the solution is to get a reference to the image element and just manipulate it in JavaFX, and it, the page will be updated automatically. So this is how we do it. We ask the engine for the document, and that's the HTML document. So we get the representation in JavaFX. And then we ask the document for a specific tag with the name body. And then we just set some attributes on the body. In this case, we change the style to another background, a background color. So instead of white, it's going to be mm. gray. And then we ask the document for an element with ID equal to header. And we set the text content on that object to Golden Gate San Francisco, and we change the style attribute once again. And then we do the same for the image. We change the actual image, and we change the style of the image. So there is no JavaFX, JavaScript communication. It's just method invocations in JavaFX. And the result will be something like this. So okay. that's DOM manipulation. And you don't have to sort of sync it anyway. 
as soon as you change uh, your Java representations of the HTML object, the page will just be yeah, updated. No commits, no updates. So as soon as you change the object in JavaFX, the web page, page gets updated, which is very convenient. It is, yeah. And you can also just insert nodes into the DOM, where you can append them last, or you can remove them again. So it's a very powerful way of, of changing the DOM. And you can also create new elements from the DOM. OK, cool. So um, yeah, nice screenshots again, by the way. Thank you. Um, I'm going to talk a bit about debugging, uh, which is, yeah. Yeah. And you just want the intercept when you click the search button with the search text. So you don't, obviously, Google doesn't have any knowledge of the web view, mm -hmm. that, so you can't put like, context objects in it. Yep. Is, that, is that feasible? Yeah. Okay, so the question is uh, what if we load a, um, a web page from a third party, basically, and we want to sort of, uh, like, in, like in your example, find out when the user focus a certain text box, for example? Um, you can do that, but you would have to inject JavaScript of your own into this page, which you can. Um, but you can set like an event listener on an HTML object, as, not as far as I know, at least. No, I don't think so, but I'm not sure. So, but using JavaScript, it's definitely possible. But uh, yeah, there are very few methods on the web view actually and the web engine. They're very simple, but um, using JavaScript, you can sort of get around a lot of these limitations. <coughs> Yeah, with JavaScript. Yeah, well you don't have you to change the page. No, 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 no. You can inject it, uh, I mean, live. Yeah. So you can load any page and inject whatever you want into it and mess around with it as, as much as you want. <laughs> so it's possible. And I'm not sure, but, but uh, it might be a possibility to get the DOM object in JavaFX, uh, like I've shown you, and attach a listener to that object. But I'm not sure. But it's. I think we have a good demo for you a bit later. <laughs> a screenshot. <laughs> <laughs> great. Uh, great questions. Keep them coming. Um, so debugging. Most modern browsers have really powerful debugging tools these days, even Internet Explorer. Um, but once we start communicating with our JavaFX code, I mean, that's not available in a browser. We have to be able to debug it within our application, right? Because it's a very specific context that might cause specific problems. So if all you want are a few simple debug printouts, you know, why are we entering this if statement or not? Or are we, what's the script up to, basically? Uh, well, there are no dedicated methods of doing this in the web view. You can't sort of um, print stuff in the console from the web view. But we've shown you one way of doing this or achieving this, and that's to use um, the alert callback, for example. Um, so you register an on alert uh, event handler, and we just print whatever we get from the web page. So this effectively turns all alert calls in the web page into system out print lines. And it's a bit of a hack. It's not very nice, but it's really quick. If all you need are a couple of printouts, this is probably the quickest way. But it, it's kind of a hack, like I said, and we don't really like it. But luckily, you can do this. And this is very nice. And that's not a hack, you mean? No, no, no. <laughs> this is not a hack. <laughs> uh, what this does, I haven't written this myself. It's a standard script from, from the web. And what this does is loading something called Firebug Lite into the web view. And Firebug is a debug debugging tool for Firefox. And the Lite version is implemented entirely in JavaScript. And it works really fine. It works great in the web view. Um, so what you get with this strange script that you can easily copy and paste is basically Firebug from Firefox within your own application. And of course, I have a demo. 
So I've written a very, very simple web browser um, that's, well, the, the only purpose for it is to debug pages. Let's see if we can get it up here. All right, there it is. So you're going to debug this page? Yes, this is a very good page for renting cars. It's uh, sort of on the bleeding edge of web design, I think. you got to be kidding me. No, this is where I rent all my cars when I'm traveling. So it, they have really good prices, and uh, I so like the looks of it. It's very clean, you know? So you're using this page? Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah, all the time. And you got, you are actually going to try to debug it? Uh, well, I know there's, there's, there's nothing no, wrong with no it. No way, so. no way, no way. You will break Firebug if you do that. So it's not going to happen. I mean, it's not possible to debug that page. We, we got to try something other. Uh, this is a much more suitable page. Yes. Okay. Anyone who doesn't like onions is an idiot. You don't like onions, do you? Is this your page? No. This is my page. No, it's not. Okay. Okay. I can agree that this page is a bit uh, cleaner and may, might be a better example for our uh, debugging. So I have a debug button here, and when I click it, we will run the script I showed you. And I'll move this up. And this is what you get. This is Firebug Lite down here. Um, so you have a number of tabs. The first one is the console. Any error messages from JavaScript will be printed here, and we can also execute scripts of our own just by typing them into the console. The next tab is an HTML tab where you, you have pretty much the entire HTML source of the page and you can sort of drill down into it by opening tags or you can choose the inspect function and just select the tag and you'll see the source code for it down here. Out to the right you see the style of this uh, element and you can actually edit this live orange. So this is pretty much what you have in Chrome or Safari or Firefox, uh, which is a really, really nice debugging tool. And there's a tab for CSS where we can see all the CSS for, for this page and scripts and, well, all the DOM objects and so on. So this is a very, very handy tool. And it literally takes one line of code to, inv to invoke it. And uh, as you can see, it appears as a panel. You can resize it. Uh, well, like that. And you couldn't really tell it's implemented in JavaScript. So this is a very powerful thing that it, it's a great thing to know about, at least. Because you will, you will probably run, run into bugs sooner or later if you work with JavaScript integration into JavaFX and so on. So yeah, pretty cool. Sure. So Beat you've that. stolen a piece of code from Stack Overflow. <laughs> nice. Well, and I have another screen. No, I don't have. I have a demo. Whoa. So. You can probably close this. Yeah. So based on all of all the things we've learned so far, communicating and loading pages, I have a okay. I have a demo, a real demo to show you. And you know this is it. And I was think I was thinking that, you know, when we're done, we're gonna go out to celebrate our success. Or we're just going to drink. Drink to forget, yeah. Drink to forget. Either Drown way, we're going to drink. We're so going to drink, yeah. That's the bottom line. <laughs> this is a JavaFX application that uses the web view to load a map. And, well, we've, we're using Google Maps because we've heard that it's pretty complicated to write your own map service. It's so easy to get it wrong. Yeah, yeah. It, it is. It takes a lot of hard work to write yeah. your own maps. Yeah. So we use Google Maps to load it into our web page, into our web view. And what do you say? Let's start off with a beer. Definitely a beer. So we will show some of the locations that is close by uh, the center. And we will just pick one and say that we're going to go drink beer over there. And we get the cost and we get the, well, we, how the taxi will go and, All and right, everything. So. So, okay. And I'm thirsty, so yeah, sure, let's have a beer. And All right. Let's have another beer. Oh, more beer. More beer. And okay. yeah, sure. I'm and thirsty. now it knows we're up there. Okay, I see. Okay. Yeah. Okay, but enough with the beer. Let's have food. 
We Why? have to eat. Oh, we have to eat. Okay, so I'm hungry, and we're going to go to this restaurant. And sure, yeah, we're hungry, so... Yeah, and we've, we've, we're full, and we've had beer, so... And we're done. No, no. I want to dance. We have to dance. Go ahead. Uh, well, maybe later. If, oh, okay, if, you want to dance. I, if you give me beer, I'll dance. Sure, <laughs> so uh, let's go over here for some party. And sure, you can dance, because you've been drinking beer, so yeah. Yeah. And now, well, I've had enough of you, so <laughs> let's go home. And we get a receipt. That's not the web view, that's just JavaFX. And we're using the, some of the effects and animations that you can do. And you get the entire route for the taxi from Google Maps. Cool. And it's all a web view. Exactly. You never know. <laughs> <laughs> no. The, <laughs> the map in the center, that is the web view. And the parts outside, you know, the, the background and the two partials, partial maps are JavaFX, just images. Uh, That's that just an image, I think, in JavaFX. Yeah, so just an image. It's, it's a bit fake, but it could be a real... But still, yeah. Uh, <laughs> so, so these maps are HTML files, uh, including Google Maps, and we're communicating with the maps from JavaFX and back again, basically. So, yeah, it's kind of cool. We did, or you did this actually in, well, an afternoon or a day. So you can do really cool stuff. And there's actually example code for this out there on the big internet. So, my first demo. And I told you it was going to be cool. Yeah. Yeah, OK, that was cool. All right, uh, I have another demo, so. Sure. Let's see. You have a demo. I always have demos. Any sure. questions while he starts this up? What version of the JRE does JavaFX come ship with? So does version 6 of JRE have like what point does version 7 have? All right. We are you we're using Java 7, I think, 7.7, .7, or 7 update 7. Yeah. But you can run this on Java 6 as well, can't you? Sure. I believe you can, yeah. It's part of Java 7 from update 6 or something like that, I think. Right? Yeah, yep. I think so. Uh, before that, you have to download it as a separate file. But now it's bundled with it, and yeah. All right. Um, This is, I'd, I'll just show, show this quickly, but this is sort of an example of what you could use the web view for in a more serious context, perhaps. What a complicated GUI. Yes, this is a really complicated program, and it's, well, it's sort of a mock-up of a really complicated program. But the point is, we don't know how to use this. We need some kind of help. And there is a manual built into this tool. And there it is. It's, of course, a web view, a very ugly one, but it works. And... Uh, there's a small how-to here, how to do something in this very complicated program. So the first step is, in the main window, select the ding radio button. Okay, we can start looking for that. It might be in another tab or in a pop-up window or something. Or we can just click this link and sort of have the component glow a bit here so we can easily find it. And when I've completed this first step, we communicate back to the web page that this step is completed, turn it green and so on. And the next is this slider down here and uh, a button down there. And we can, of course, integrate this a lot more into the application and uh, sort of um, invoke functions in the application, open new windows or move stuff, move the slider for us if we wanted to. And we c this is WebKit. I mean, WebKit is a great, great um, browser engine. So we can use, we can have videos embedded here or um, animations or sort of tests for the users or whatever we wanted to. So we can have really nice formatted documentation with a bit of intelligence built in. Yes? Uh, JavaFX is part of Java nowadays, yeah. So it's, it's built in, yeah. WebKit is also, it's built into JavaFX. I don't know how, but it's, it takes up, I think it's half of JavaFX is the web view. <laughs> so it's quite a big part of it, yeah. Well, you don't have to download anything separately. No, everything's built in. just run this code that we've shown you, and it will work. So just new web view, that's it. All right. Okay. Um, yeah, let's move on. I've had enough of you. <laughs> Thank you. So I have a demo. 
always very friendly. I know. And, you know, we've been showing a lot of cool stuff. And let's go back to basics and just show a single web page. And then this is a web page with, you know, 10 most wanted Java fugitives or JavaFX fugitives. And they are kind of ill-behaved and, you know, crazy people that works with JavaFX. But these, these people work for Oracle. They're building what we're using. Yeah. They're, they're nice guys. Perhaps. All right. So, you so a single web page. Yeah, I My think you're, you're up to something because this is a bit too simple. But okay, you have a web page with some familiar faces. Yeah. But I think you made a mistake. Nope. Yes, you did. You made a mistake because Indiana Jones is not part of the JavaFX team or the JavaFX community. Are you sure? Yes. I'm not convinced. Uh, well, but okay, he might not be part of JavaFX. So, you know what? This isn't a, a normal web page. It's actually, well, it's a web page, but we're using some of the techniques that we've already shown you to create a, a live editor. So I can just click on stuff like I do in a web page, but as soon as I press the command key, I will highlight the object that is under the mouse. And when I click, I will open an editor that you can just live edit the code. So let's change the picture. And let's change the page, the image to Gosling. Uh, it doesn't really work there anymore, but OK. Gosling and apply. And the web page is updated hey, automatically. That's Whoa. not James Gosling. <laughs> oh, sorry, dude. So I mean, it's I don't know why you would build an application like this, but it's just to show the power of, of the communication. So it's pure JavaScript communication. And that's it. And we're actually updating the, the web page live. So if you go to javamostwanted.com, you will see that his ugly face is up there. You made it live. a bit worse. <laughs> yeah, I made it worse, yeah. All right, so what do you say we skip to the last demo, perhaps? We, yeah, sure. We will we have, have a few, few minutes for uh, questions at the end, so. Sure, so I have one last demo. And you know, I, it was my responsibility to come up with the last demo. And we've been doing so much that it, I couldn't come up with anything. So I've been thinking for weeks, what are we going to do? And then it hit me. You know the abstract that we send to, to conferences to get accepted? Yeah. It turns out that people read them. People read the abstracts? Yeah. Why would you do that? I mean, it's... But they're just know. a bunch of buzzwords. And I mean, we just make stuff up to get accepted. I know. Right? I know. So... Um, this is our abstract, and you know, I figured it out that we can just read the abstract and do what it says. I mean, we're, we're apparently supposed to do that. And we've done most of the stuff, most of the buzzwords, but blurring the line between web and application. We have to blur the line between web and application. So we have to create an application that you will never guess what part is JavaFX and what part is WebView. So I've done that. Wow. We should read the abstract. We should have thought of this Stupid. years ago. It would have I saved know. us a whole lot of time. I know. <laughs> well. And uh, let's start it up. So you're free to guess what part is JavaFX and what part is So some, web some part of this is web content. Yeah. OK. And some is JavaFX. So any guesses? Ooh. There's a, f there's a beer in it. If you can guess it. <laughs> oh, in that case. No. The bottom panel is web. It's JavaFX. It's JavaFX. But your where is the web view? Yeah, find the web view. That's the, well, that's the a channel. Oh, the rest. Oh. No, no. No. Well, yes and no. <laughs> No, there's no web view overlay. That's, no. that's not right. I think it's time to show. OK, it so I have this show web view. And when I press it, the web view will be colored red. And you will see where it is. And this is the web view. So we have eight web views <laughs> and eight JavaFX components. And we do a lot of communication between them. Uh, and this is just to show you how powerful it is. So we have to calculate exact where, exactly where the ball is and what part to, to, to draw and stuff like that. So. But it, you could say that, oh, you're just moving an image on an overlay, right? Yeah, but I'm not. So I figured you would say that. And that's why I have the, I don't know if you can see it, the special ball. So 
when I press the special ball, the ball will be painted in a very different way in the web view. So um, let's wait. So JavaFX. This is JavaFX? The white yeah. ones are JavaFX? And that's the web mm. view. So I'm clearly not cheating. I mean, we're actually painting parts of the ball in, in, in the different context. Okay. That's it. I'm uh, slightly impressed. I, I gotta know. give you that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> so the ball is the JavaFX. No. No, the ball both. is both the web view and the JavaFX. So we part we paint parts of the ball in JavaFX and in HTML. At certain coordinates of the of Yeah. The yeah. So you have sixteen panels. Yeah. 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 And they all get told to draw different parts of the ball. So yeah, it's, it's, it's not something you would do normally. Why not? <laughs> 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 but you, are, you get the point. I mean, you can communicate between the different uh, yeah. components. Yeah. And There's it's a lot of stuff going on here, and it's quite complicated. So yeah, it's a cool, cool demo, I guess. So we have two minutes for questions. Right. Okay. I was we're doing this point. <laughs> <laughs> no, the, we're. Um, the question was, what do we actually do uh, on our day jobs? Basically, are we using JavaFX for, JavaFX for something? We're real? trying to do that, but we we don't work with it. We do it for presentations, and you know, kind of helping Oracle to promote it because yeah, we want to work with it. But it's. Uh, I think from the first JavaFX release, which wasn't very successful, people are a bit afraid of it now, uh, and I think it's having a hard time getting. Yeah getting used. So and we're trying to promote we it because push we it. want to work with it. Yeah. yeah. Sure. Uh, yeah, again, uh, fantastic talk. And, and, and uh, yeah, I guess it's probably the best thing to do the conference. <laughs> Thank you. It, was, it just came out completely out of the blue. Uh, doing a season swing developer. Yeah, we too. I sort of, <laughs> I just the pain that I went through that you seem to have done seamlessly is, is, is fantastic. How, you're, you're saying that you want to use it. How would you be able to convince your managers and your executives that this is the future because obviously coming from Swing, both of us, uh, we, we don't yeah. understand the pain that we go through and yeah. the simplicity that this brings. So how do, you, how do you convince your boss to use yeah. JavaFX instead of Swing? Is it stable? Like, can, you, like is, can you reference production sites that have jumped on board? I think it's always like the chicken and the egg, and nobody want to want to be first using this. But there are a few companies using it, and you should get in get in touch with uh, like Stephen Chin or or Jim Weaver at Oracle, who are evangelists for JavaFX. But I think a great argument would be you don't have to replace everything that you have. You can use there's a component, a Swing component called JFX, JFX panel. panel that lets you use parts of JavaFX inside your Swing program. It's very easy to use. So you can just invoke. You can just Add a web view into your Swing application. Yeah, and so. uh, you know, to if you're gonna if you're gonna build a, a client side application and you you're doing a lot of Swing work, then JavaFX is the natural thing to do. It's the replacement for Swing. Yeah, Swing won't go away, but the architect for all things graphic at Oracle says this this is what you're gonna use. I mean, Swing is the old way and, and JavaFX is the new way basically. So let's chat a bit more afterwards and we'll have time for one more question I think. Sorry with and swing. Okay, if it integrates better with the op with the look and feel of other operating systems. No, it doesn't. It has its own look and feel, and it doesn't care what, what operating system it's running on. So but you can style it uses, using CSS. Yeah, you'll have to do that your, on your own. Yeah. But I think they have a thought, sort of a, um, they, have, uh, they want to create themes for JavaFX. They want to have theme support, and people are, have already started to create themes. So it's getting there, but you don't have the look and feels to make it look native. It will look its own way on all operating systems. You, you can style everything using CSS, so you don't have to do it programmatically. So CSS is the way to go there. OK. OK, thank you. Thanks. Thank you very much. Thank you for the presentation.